What is impermanent loss? Impermanent loss is the unrealized loss that occurs when your share of a liquidity provider position becomes uneven compared to its original position. If you knew what that meant, great. You don't have to watch this video. However, if you were as clueless as we were a few weeks ago, stick around and you'll be able to explain this concept of impermanent loss to your grandmother. Here at Whiteboard Crypto, we spent a lot of time and resources creating these amazing animations so that you can sit back, relax, and understand the topic with the help of our analogies, stories, and examples. Let's dig in. First off, impermanent loss only happens to people who provide liquidity to a liquidity pool. If you have no idea what a liquidity pool is, you'll need to watch our video on how liquidity pools work to fully understand this topic because it can get complicated very quickly. Secondly, impermanent loss is easiest to explain through examples. So we're going to go through two examples in this video. Let's say you put up 100 Ethereum and $10,000 into a liquidity pool. Now most liquidity pools want there to be a 50-50 ratio whenever you initially start your deposit. So we can reasonably assume the price of one Ethereum at this point in time is $100. So there's $10,000 worth of a stable coin and $10,000 thousand dollars worth of ethereum that you are putting into this liquidity pool so you take that total twenty thousand dollars and put it into the liquidity pool hoping to gain a profit on some of the fees that will happen within the pool time for our first example let's say that the price of ethereum rises to 110 dollars well a trader can come along and realize that he can buy ethereum at your liquidity pool for 100 dollars and then sell it to coinbase for 110 so he keeps buying more and more and the algorithm will keep charging him more and more and until he stops making money. That's how these decentralized exchanges work. You pay more and more for each asset that you want to buy, so that way it never runs out of the asset to sell you. Even if it gets down to very little, the price will start to go up exponentially. However, in our case, the asset was much cheaper than another exchange, so it created what we call an arbitrage opportunity for a trader. You can watch our automated market maker video for a better explanation of how this specific algorithm works. But if we do the math, we figure out that he was able to give 400 and $88 and buy 4.652 Ethereum, at least until the liquidity pool price was also $110. If he bought any more Ethereum, he would be losing money. So he immediately sold his cheaper Ethereum that he bought from us to Coinbase for $511.82 which means he made a profit of $23.82 simply by buying and selling between two different liquidity pools. Now, let's take the stance of being that liquidity provider. This means there is now $10,488 of the stable coin in the pool and 95.347 Ethereum in the pool. So if we take 95.347 and multiply it by $110 because that's the going price of Ethereum, we get 10,488. So if we take 10,488 of our stable coin and 10,488 of our Ethereum and add them together, we get a total value of $20,976. So the liquidity provider now has a total value of $20,976, meaning he made a nice $976 because Ethereum went up. He made some pretty decent money today. However, to calculate impermanent loss, we need to calculate how much money he would have had if he didn't invest in the liquidity pool and just held his stablecoin and Ethereum in his wallet instead. So obviously, he still would have had his initial $10,000, but what about if he held his 100 Ethereum? Well, now that 100 Ethereum would be worth $11,000. So he would have had a total of $21,000 if he just held it. This means we can calculate his impermanent loss to be $21,000 minus $20,976, which is $24. So in short, this liquidity provider would have made more money if he just held on to his Ethereum and stablecoin. Now, $24 might not seem like much, but imagine a similar scenario where the price jumps 20% instead of 10% where the price dropped by half. In short, impermanent loss is caused when the difference between two assets in a pool is changed. As this change increases, so does the impermanent loss. So if Ethereum goes back to $100, then the impermanent loss is basically canceled and there's no impermanent loss because both assets would be the same as when the liquidity provider initially invested them. They call it impermanent loss because it only becomes permanent whenever you cash out your liquidity. Until you do that, there is still an opportunity for the loss to normal itself out. So to sum it up, impermanent loss is the loss that you get when you have less money by investing in a liquidity pool compared to the value of the assets that you would have had if you just held them. Let's consider another example. This time we're going to start off with, again, 100 Ethereum and $10,000 in a liquidity pool. However, Ethereum price drops from $100 to $60 on Binance. So another trader comes along, he buys Ethereum at Binance and sells it to our liquidity pool, starting at $100 and then our liquidity pool keeps buying it at a 
lower and lower price until the pool hits $60. Now, I personally know how the algorithm of a constant product automated market maker works, and you actually can too if you watch our video on it. But using the math, we find out that this means the trader gave the pool 30 Ethereum. So this is important. The trader bought 30 Ethereum at $60 each at Binance, which cost them $1,800. Now, let's see how much they made. A million dollars divided by 130 Ethereum gives us 14,285, which means the pool should have 7,692. However, it has 10,000. I just want to say that was ridiculous. If you want to know what those numbers mean real quick, go watch our automated market maker video. However, this means that the trader received the difference for giving the pool 30 Ethereum. In short, the trader bought Ethereum at $1,800 and sold for $2,307, which means he earned $507. That's pretty decent for just buying and selling in a couple minutes. Now, let's take a look at our liquidity provider. They have 130 Ethereum at a market price of $600. This means that the value of Ethereum in their portion of the pool is $7,800, and the cash value of the pool is $7,692. This means the value of the assets in the liquidity pool equals $15,292, which is a sharp loss from the initially invested $20,000. Now, let's calculate their impermanent loss. If they didn't invest those initial assets, they would have had $10,000 cash and 100 ethereum which the 100 ethereum would now be worth six thousand dollars and doing some simple math we realize they would have had sixteen thousand dollars if they didn't invest in the liquidity pool so sixteen thousand dollars minus fifteen thousand two hundred ninety two is an impermanent loss of seven hundred and eight dollars so by now we hope that you're understanding a little bit more about how impermanent loss works essentially what you need to know is that it's good for any liquidity provider when two assets that you are investing in stay roughly the same price when one goes up and the other stays the same, the liquidity provider starts to experience impermanent loss and can only recover from that loss if the first asset starts to come down to equal out the liquidity. Now, it gets really tricky when both assets' prices start moving. In short, if they go in opposite directions, the liquidity provider starts to lose money very quickly. However, if they increase at the same rate or decrease at the same rate, the liquidity provider may not lose money due to impermanent loss at all, and they may just reap the rewards of the profits from the trading fees. Here is a neat little chart that you can look at to see how much impermanent loss a liquidity provider may experience in terms of how much that asset changes in price. As the price of an asset increases past 100% of its value to the other asset, the impermanent loss grows. And as the price of an asset decreases less than 100%, the impermanent loss also grows. So like I mentioned, we want the price to be about the same as when we invested. Otherwise, we start to experience impermanent loss. So as we end this video, we want to let you know that we are actually working on a second video that explains how to reduce or mitigate your risk as a liquidity provider. And if you'd like to see that video, consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you're watching this video in the future and we've already created that second video, you can check the link in the description. We hope that you enjoyed this video, but most of all, we hope that you learned something. Thank you guys so much for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.